thermoset plastics. Not all plastic resins are the same, and I don't mean the difference between, say, polycarbonate and polyethylene. Uh, generally, with injection molding, we think in terms of using a thermoplastic material. Now, thermoplastic resins can be melted, molded, and ground and remelted. Uh, in the simple terms, uh, you know, heating a thermoplastic resin turns the solid into a liquid, and when the thermoplastic is cooled, the molecular chains reform and the material reverts back to a solid state. Thermoset materials are different. At room temperature, a thermoset resin is in a liquid state. And this could be what we would visualize as a liquid, for instance, if you were molding with a liquid silicone rubber, but it could also be a paste, which is technically a liquid, but there would be a, something like a bulk molding compound. Now, a thermoset material undergoes a non-reversible chemical reaction when it's processed. So thermoplastic materials can be reground, but a thermoset material cannot. We can't reuse it. So uh, another thing about working with thermoset materials in SolidWorks plastics is we focus on the pack stage of analysis. All right, now a shameless plug here. Uh, if you're interested in reading more about the model scene here, this is from a blog that I wrote a couple of years ago. All right, so let's take a look at thermoset materials in SolidWorks Plastics. Uh, oh, I need to switch to SolidWorks. There we go. All right, so I already have this project set up. Uh, we'll take a look at a couple of things that make thermosets unique once we get into the plastics project. I think we're going to get into the plastics project here. All right, a little bit of a slowdown, but what's happening is I'm loading the data from uh, this particular plastics project. So it's loading the mesh information and material information and so forth. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of things. When it comes to thermoplastic, sorry, thermoset resins in SolidWorks plastics, uh, there's only a few. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the database here. Um, the thermoplastic, sorry, thermoset resin, see, we, we and to think in terms of thermoplastic. Uh, you have BMC, which is bulk molding compounds. You also have EMC, which is an epoxy molding compound, and then only three liquid silicone rubbers. All right now, the key with these, uh, they have cure parameters in the material properties that tell SolidWorks Plastics how they actually cure during processing. All right now, when it works with, uh, when you're working with a thermoset resin, uh, sometimes we're concerned about the actual fill, uh, which you would be if you were doing a liquid silicone rubber, um, but that's not the primary thing that we're interested in. Uh, really, when it comes to working with thermosets, we're going to deal with two different things. So I'm going to go into my results here. This is pre-solved. And when I'm loading the results, there are two different outputs that are unique to working with a thermoset. The first is this plot here. This is material reactive conversion at end of fill. Now what this particular plot means is once you have finished injecting, in this case, the liquid silicone rubber into the mold, um, how much of the resin as a percentage is actually cured by the time you're finished pushing all of that resin into the cavity. Uh, and I'll speed this up so you can see what it actually would look like, um, you know, just like that. And What's going to happen is closest to the gate location on this part, there's a potential that that's going to cure before you filled all the way to the outside, right? So 23% of the total volume has cured by the time I finished filling my waffle here. Now, the more important one is actually the pack results, right? So when you're dealing with a thermoset resin, what we're going to do is take a look at material reactive conversion at post filling end. Now what this means is I've completed the fill and I've completed the pack and I've gone completely through the cooling phase. All right now cooling phase is a misnomer for thermoset materials. The cooling phase for a thermoset material you're actually heating the mold to a very high temperature to convert the resin into the solid material. All right so we're going to take a look at a visualization here so you can see this. Uh, I'll switch this to say 85%. Uh, so this shows you a range of where the resin is at least 12 to, well, 12 to 13% cured to 85% cured by the time you get to the end of the pure cooling phase or not pure cooling, it's actually the 
curing phase, if you will, for a thermoset. Uh, so obviously by the end of the analysis, by the end of your pure cooling time, you would wanna see this as close to 100% as possible. Now, where is that actually? That pure cooling time, I'm gonna go into my settings and I'm gonna click on the pack tab. And this would be the total time that you think the part should stay in the mold for curing a thermoset resin. All right, so we don't need to save that and we'll just come back here. Uh, so there, the key tips for thermoset materials. Um, generally, we don't care about the fill phase of injection molding analysis. Uh, it is important when you're dealing with some types of thermoset materials, uh, but really the output that makes the most sense for us to look at is the reactive convergence at end of fill. Um, when working with thermosets, really the primary output that we're gonna focus on is material reactive convergence at post-filling end. As I mentioned, that plot indicates how much of the resin has cured by the end of the pack stage specified by pure cooling time. Finally, for most thermoset applications, um, well, we're gonna focus on the pack stage results. That's really what's key for curing a thermoset resin. Uh, 